Hey, speaking of uh, donuts, mm. did you see a couple of bits of donut news? Uh, firstly, <laughs> they've found a donut shaped well, rock. Well, <laughs> so okay. let's go on. <laughs> okay, I was going to jump down your throat. No, I wasn't aware of that. That is breaking news. Hold the press. So on Mars, on the surface of Mars, there's <laughs> a donut. They've found a donut shaped rock. Alex on Williams Mars. is en route <laughs> to launch it. As All speak. I'm saying is the king might have done something, some sort of deal with Elon Musk or something, <laughs> because they've found a donut rock they can't explain on Mars. And the other one, which is, yes, it may be something that you do know more about, which is the fact that uh, the people, the, the king, the donut king, the donut uh, family have got on board with the, the Twisties family. Yeah, Twisties have been doing this for a while now. Because mm. what's I mean, going on? Uh, well, Twisties. I'm not sure if you know this, but you're not on social media anymore. No, I'm not. I, I no, I don't like to mention it, but <laughs> I thank you for bringing it up. I appreciate it. Uh, but it's a become uh, a bit of a trope now on social media, and it probably was when you were on, but probably with like mm. Smith's chips or something, where it's like oh, I can't believe they're releasing like Vegemite. So. The current thing is Twisties have just done a raspberry flavored twisty or Twisties has done like a lemon flavored twisty or whatever. And so, and people get, get upset and what for whatever. I have never had an inbo- inbox, uh, well, sorry, Tofop. The Tofop accounts have never had a full inbox than after Twisties announced that, yes, they were partnering up with Donut King. I mean, it, look, I, I, look, I'm not saying I'm angry at it or anything like that, but I just can't. <laughs> get over the fact of how ahead of the zeitgeist mm-hmm. we were like for once and i haven't accidentally <laughs> actually you know what i was saving look, i was saving no no not accidentally i was saving this email. well yeah no completely accidentally <laughs> i was saving this unless email. we've been like unless the good people at uh you know the donut king have been doing a secret seeding campaign. Like, you know, so we talked about subliminal messaging, this idea that you can seed an idea in somebody's mind by having these little, like maybe we are part of the entire what do you Donut call King a, resurgence. A it's called a PSYOP, yeah. right? Isn't it? We've been yeah, the well. victim of a advertising <laughs> PSYOP on behalf of the Donut King. Because, but the, and again, look, we've restated this a hundred times, but I thought Donut King was dead. Like yeah. I thought it was an, uh, the mm. brand, the franchise was dead and buried. King is dead, long live Only the king. Only to discover that, it, and to the point, Will, that mm. I will confess, I was in burly heads <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on Tuesday. Yeah. And I dropped uh, my wife mm-hmm. and my daughter at the dentist. And while they were there, mm. I was like, oh, the uh, Burley Shopping Centre is not far from here. You know what? You know <laughs> who owns that land? <laughs> you know who resides in that land? The much Donut like King. much like a visitor to London would swing past Buckingham Palace, you might as well have a look, even if you. <laughs> I actually wanted to take get, take uh-huh. a photo that I could whack up on the socials mm-hmm. of me like genuflecting uh, in mm-hmm. front of the Donut King, paying homage <laughs> in the court of the King. How to um, the King? I'd actually forgotten my phone, um, but I did go and get two two hot sinnies. Okay, um, uh, and a coffee which I've never got mm-hmm. from Donut King before, and I will not do again. Uh, hot cinnamon donuts as good as ever. The mm. coffee's barely recognizable as as coffee what sort of coffee are they rolling like i mean have they got a, like, like a, 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 a coffee yeah, like machine a proper proper barista machine which i thought you couldn't fuck up when you had like you know you grind up the beans and stuff but apparently you can Mate, so I just got I, this light. is so since i got my coffee machine and you said you've had one for like a couple of years a, a couple of years since i got mine i am now so judgmental oh so judgy <laughs> So judgmental of people making bad coffee because I know how easy it is to make good coffee. Yeah, I mean flour. I mean flour, mm. cup art, cream art, milk art, whatever you call it, is mm. a completely different set of skills. Because I've tried to do that. I've seen um, my local barista how mm-hmm. she does it, and it's amazing. And Iona really digs it. So I try and do it with like my coffee, maybe a babuccino or whatever. But I just I can't. I haven't divined how that's done yet. Have you watched, you know, there's like whole streams, oh, videos sure. and stuff online yeah. of people doing it. You could just go and watch someone do it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm not having any of that. I've just watched my barista three or four times. And I, <laughs> thought, I, I think I, I know how to I do it. I reckon I know how to do this. <laughs> you just got to swirl the cup around and kind of do some jiggles up and well, down and like a tree this, happens or something. The, yeah, she does the leaf mm. one, which seems to be yeah. the easiest because it's yes. just a... You That's your basic way, beginner one. Yeah, The beginner one. Cannot mm. do it. And I don't know if it's because I'm working with oat milk. That might be the issue. Oh, Maybe I think that is the issue. 
Right. Okay. But mm. she seems to do it with oat milk. Yeah, but I mean, she's a professional, man. Like, I don't yeah. think an amateur could just <laughs> roll she's around. A professional. And do it. She watched a five-minute YouTube video that, for some reason, <laughs> that you couldn't be bothered watch. watching. So that's in front. That puts her way in front of you. Now, look, you've brought up a couple of things that, yes. and I, I want to get back to the, the donut king, okay. the donut on Mars. But this was a letter that I was going to say for the end of the show, but mm-hmm. we've, I didn't realize I was going to start in the land of the king. Uh, and it's interesting because you talked mm-hmm. about this psyop. This is from Matt. Um, he's got a bit of stuff, some compliments to you that he wants to get through at the start. And then we'll okay. get to donut king right. content. Just to, so just mm-hmm. prepare yourself for some mm-hmm. compliments. Dear Ando and Clawsome. Okay. I discovered philosophy during COVID lockdown. Remember those good times and have continued to binge on Tofop, Fofop, and even a little walking the room with guest Charlie number one. Will, you seem to be the only person that makes Dave completely repress his rage because he laughs so hard with you. That's an interesting observation. Do you think that Dave is less angry in your company because you just keep him laughing? Is it like, <laughs> is it like are you like a ringmaster with a whip in a chair? It's just like as long as I... Keep this thing distracted. I do feel like when it comes to Dave Anthony, for whatever reason, because I love Dave and I like working with Dave and all the things that people say of Dave and think of Dave, I feel like I am, you know, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. Just I have the capacity to be able to subdue the Hulk. I can just like (laughs) rub him on the head and sing him a little lullaby and he just changes back into Bruce Banner. Uh, as a completionist, I burned through philosophy with Will Anderson mm-hmm. and then jumped into both ends of your extensive podcasting. Current episodes, original faux fop up to and over episode 100. Lots of hilarious work on here. This is great. I love it. This is like a little summation <laughs> of our past hits. Uh, only to realize I had lagged in the original tofop while typing. I just heard Charlie ask, what's a bidet in episode 24? which was 2010, Pimp My Bog. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> so I have to say 13 years later, I'm pretty confident I don't know what a bidet is. <laughs> I've travelled extensively since then, and I have washed my ass in many a bidet. Is that what you do in a bidet? Please be something. <laughs> Otherwise, I've got some explaining to do, Will. <laughs> That, Charlie, that's another bidet. That's a fountain. You can't just wash your ass in that. No. Get out of the Chevy fountain. <laughs> that's a children's school bubbler. You have your ass on a bubbler, Charlie. This is not a bidet. You've got the general gist of what's going on, mate. But no, no, <laughs> you're on top of a geyser, Charlie. No, that's a fire hydrant, Charlie. No. I mean, again, general concept, you're absolutely nailing. <laughs> Charlie, this is Niagara Falls, not the world's largest bidet. Charlie, you are over the blowhole of a humpback whale, but you've got the idea. <laughs> Having just listened to effectively uh, three hours of your recent Donut King deep dive, okay. including Finding finding mm. the King and Leichhardt in Sydney, where I was forced by Charlie's passionate donut devotion to eat too many cinnamon donuts, sponsorship here, Donut King, I then jumped back to the year 2010, mm-hmm. episode 20, only to find you discussing Donut King. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me, though. 13 years yeah. of Donut King. Well, original well, conversation about Donut <laughs> King, 12-year 12 12 gap. gap. <laughs> <laughs> Much like, but this is the point. Like, I, can, I don't know what the context of the, and I don't know if our correspondent tells us the context of the original discussion about Donut King, but... Donuts have been a consistent theme of this podcast. Like they've been there from the start, particularly your love of donuts, where yeah. to get the best donuts, the hot cinnamon donuts, the South yeah. Melbourne markets. Like, you know, we've we've had, I think, general donut chat throughout the various evolutions 100%. of this podcast. To the to the point that I think that mm. we've even done like a kind of knockoff version where we talk about your and croissants. It's sort of like mm. I feel like Donut chat was friends and, and croissant chat is how I met your mother. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's like they're equally enter- like successful and entertaining. I, but you're I don't of- think so. I think oh, it's really? much more like maybe Frasier. You were che- <laughs> your cheers Get out of and here. it was the croissants of Frasier. <laughs> but that's because it's a croissant and not a donut. The subject matter makes it more highbrow. I believe so. Why? Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, I'm not as re- popular with the masses. I mean, you know, Cheers, it's in a bar. It was this a huge show. Frasier was a bit more highfalutin, fancy dancy. I suppose that is true because right? you're talking about going to like, you know, uh, mm. artisanal bakeries yeah. and stuff like that. Like, mm. I think that the croissant thing really took off when you were living in Melbourne. That's right. 
because you had a dealer. I mean, well, also, I was just like, I mean, loons in Melbourne as well. Yeah. And it's just like, I mean, it's a croissant city. Oh, it's also a bit colder. I feel like cold weather is good for a croissant. And when I stayed at your place mm. in LA once, um, I found in your freezer, it's the only food left in the fridge oh, in the yeah. freezer, two like frozen, mm. like um, to be baked croissants, mm -hmm. like the pastries, I guess you mm -hmm. call them, the raw pastry. And I was like, what, 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 this is curiouser and curiouser. And so I followed the instructions mm. and put those babies in the oven and then became addicted mm -hmm. <laughs> for the next, I think I was there for two months. Every week I was just going to that local supermarket and buying some of those little pre-frozen croissants because. Because the trick to croissants is getting like, hot. like it doesn't I matter know. that they're frozen ones that you've got from because you get the advantage of them not having sat around. If you get them hot and fresh, that outweighs any sort of quality thing of going to a bakery or like a specialist place, right? Yeah, like when yeah. I was doing getaway and I um I did this I did this little cooking course um in a Cambodian market and we mm. got like all the ingredients fresh from the market, like including the fish, like it was literally alive five seconds before we filmed the segment. Mm. So, and I, the flavors were amazing. It was the same with the croissant, Will. Yeah. Like you just get it hot out of the oven and it's like, you just dip it in a little bit of soft butter and then the, oh my God, <laughs> just the best. Yeah. Frasier. But this is Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to cheers. Well, you were asking... Uh -huh. What he doesn't get the mm. context of what we're discussing, but I think I remember it because that was when I was living in my Randwick home. Mm -hmm. And I lived, if you walked a direct line from my front door across Queens Park to Bondi Junction to mm. Eastgate, yeah. there was a there was a donut king That's in true. the foyer of yes. that. And so I remember it was quite a common like thing for me, especially if I'd been like hung over or whatever, is I would shuffle out of bed and take the dog and then cross the park and go get like a six pack of hot cinnamon donuts and eat them on the way back. I'd often go to sleep thinking of donuts and then that would motivate me through the next day. I had a, um, a hot cinny, not a hot cinny actually, TM, hot cinny TM, a yeah, hot, hot cinnamon, cinnamon donut. Is I should I call had. it by its proper name. <laughs> uh, not by any of its synonyms, ironically, ah. but I, <laughs> I, I had a hot cine, um, but it was the whatever it is G Force or G Train or G Town or G the gluten free what? ones. Oh What's, yeah, the yeah, green yeah, one yeah. that's everywhere now. Like it's you can, everywhere. It's a little franchise, clearly all over the place. But I was in Townsville, and they had some like they were doing street markets on the Sunday, and I, I they I was like, oh, you know what? Like I can't resist now. Every time I go past as well, I never used to be that person. I could easily walk past a cinnamon donut, but all this donut chat has made me one of those people <laughs> that every up. time I'm like, you know what? I should try this one. Might be good yeah. for the podcast. I actually thought that in my head. I was like, might be good for the podcast. <laughs> those ones are good, but the, like most gluten-free things, as soon as they cool down, mm -hmm. they're like, they're gross. They're not. They're not fun to eat at all. No, but I mean, mostly you can get those, particularly those little ones at the market like that. There was just a little caravan at the market. They're mostly making them fresh to order. So, um, yeah, no, I was lucky. Had two fresh steaming hot cinnamon donuts. To see the full video, join our Patreon. Patreon.com slash TOEFOP.